Hi, Mike Manu here. And in this video, I want to talk to you about the single most important number that you as a business owner needs to know to scale and grow your business, period, end of story. And unfortunately, probably 90 to 95% of you watching this and the rest of the business owners out there don't know the answer to the question. Now, why should you listen? Well, for the last 40 years, I've been a serial entrepreneur, business owner, business executive coach. I've helped companies go from startup to nine figures per year in the direct response industry. And I just, I've been around. And so I say that just to give you a baseline on how I know this number and why you need to know it. And what that number is and what the question is, what's your long-term customer slash client value? In other words, how much is a new customer or client worth to your business in the first order, the first 30 days, six months, one year, and in a lifetime? Because without knowing that number, you have no idea what you can spend to acquire that customer and or client. And without knowing that, then you make bad decisions. And that's the thing that causes businesses to go out of business and the high, high failure rate. Even in today's world of social media, just throw up a web page, just get on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and you know, get all these customers. Well, you're competing with every other business owner that's doing the exact same thing as you are. And usually the only thing that most business owners know how to do to differentiate themselves is to sell based on price because they don't have a value proposition. They don't have a USP. But those are subjects for another time and another place and another video. So let's get back to long-term customer value. Let's say that customer to you or client, I like to use the word client. I learned this from a mentor of mine, Jay Abraham, years and years ago, decades ago, that a client, when you take on a client, you owe a fiduciary responsibility to never sell that client less than what they need to get the outcome they're looking for, nor take advantage of them and sell them more. And I do this all the time because for the last 15, 17 years, I've had an online e-commerce company. 60% of my businesses are physicians and the other 40% are uh, consumers. And uh, I always try and make sure they're getting the correct amount of whatever they need to get the results they're looking for because I don't want people talking bad about my company. And the same thing for you. So I use the term customer and client somewhat interchangeably, but you want to take that client effect. So. What can you spend to acquire that client? Okay. Now let's say that you're advertising on Facebook and you're, it's costing you a dollar to get a lead. And let's say it takes you 10 leads to get one client that generates you a thousand dollars. Okay. Great. Cost you 10 bucks. But let's say you do the same ad and you do it in the newspaper, you do it in the yellow pages or you do it in Google or you do it in some other form of medium that may cost you 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or even $100 to get that client. Well, I've seen some business owners that will say, I'm not gonna spend, that's too much money, totally forgetting about the fact that that client was worth $1,000 to them, okay? So each method of marketing or advertising uh, is going to have a different cost factor but as long as it's under the threshold of what that client's worth, you should be willing to spend it. Now, if your ad dollars are, are finite, you don't have enough to spread that thin to go that wide, then what you need to do the next thing is to figure out, well, where do my best clients come from? Because not all methods of advertising bring in the best results. Business owners found out that the hard way when they Groupon started many years ago, and maybe you were, you know, you got sucked into that as well. You advertised on Groupon, you had thousands of people that came in, they took whatever the deal was, but they never came back and they never, never spent another penny and Groupon got rich and it almost caused a lot of people, and I know some business, they went broke because the staff they had to maintain in order to satisfy that client, the increasing business. So there are strategies that you have to use when using Groupon. That's for another time in another video or another call. So. Getting back to that, so you need to take and list out your advertising, where you're advertising, what it's costing you to acquire that customer because what the customer's worth is always going to be the same unless you've gone a little bit further down that rabbit hole and you know that customers that come in through uh, a newspaper ad 
spend three times as much and three times as more often, then guess what? That customer is worth far more, even if it costs you 10 times more money to get that customer from the newspaper ad, okay? Because I see so many business owners, so many marketers, so many experts in the space, they're always spending so much time in the minutia of learning things like Facebook and, and, and LinkedIn and all these different modalities and all these different tactics, trying to save pennies, trying to save a dime. So, and I tell them, hey, what you need to spend spending your time on is how do I get that customer when they come in to spend more and, and buy more often? How do I get the salesman better trained to convert and close that customer or that lead that calls on the phone if you're a service-based company where you go to somebody's house or you're an attorney or a CPA or whatever it happens to be? There's better things to spend your time on. And I guess that comes back to are you working in your business or on your business? So many business owners are spending 30, 40, 50 hours a week just working in their business that they don't have time for the things they want to do like family, friends, golf, sports, animals, food, travel, whatever they want to do because they're so in their business because they want to know all this stuff. But you need to know it because if you're working with somebody, then you need to know what's working and what doesn't. The other thing that knowing your long-term customer value allows you to do is it allows you to know the most amount you can spend to get that client and therefore you can outbid everybody else. So many of these online, uh, whether it's Google or, or Facebook or LinkedIn, everything's competitive. So you may be a roofer that is trying to get your ad in front of people that might want a new roof, but there may be a guy who's trying to sell a car that makes more profit than you do. They're willing to spend more money to get that ad in front of your same potential client, okay? So you're not competing just against the same people in your industry, but you're competing against others that are in other industries that your client, your typical client is their same demographics, okay? Well, if you don't know your customer value, your long-term customer value, then you don't know what you can spend and the guy who has more profit can spend more money and he's always gonna outbid you, okay? That's one thing some of these people don't think about. Why? They just don't have the experience, okay? And that's how you have to look at your business. So what I would suggest to you is to get out a piece of paper, if you don't already, use the computer, use Excel, whatever you're good at, and start listing down all the different ways in which you advertise your product, what it's costing you to get a lead, what it's costing you to get a, a customer, you know, how many leads do you need to get a, a prospect in the door, or whatever your, whatever your metrics are that you need to measure your business with to find out what that customer's worth. And then, what you want to do is figure out a way you can make the customer value more. Because in the last video I talked about, most people focus on one thing, and that's just getting more customers and more clients in the door. They never get them to buy more, and they never get them to buy more often. They, they just forget about them. They go back to, how do I get someone new in the door? It's so much easier to market and advertise to those who have already bought from you once, provided you've given them a quality experience, you didn't take advantage of them, uh, you delivered results. Uh, they got just what they needed, not too little, not too much. And they'll buy more often, but most people never ask them to. Okay, Even if you don't have another product to sell them, you, you, you might be able to find another product or service that's complementary to what you just sold them. Okay, I could go on and on and talk about experiences like that in my past and working with clients or in my own businesses. So. You need to put these things down, you need to figure them out, you need to stop this, whatever you're doing after you're watching this, and you need to figure out your numbers, figure out your metrics and how you can exponentially increase your business. It's the third quarter, or excuse me, the fourth quarter of 2018, and what you do this quarter is gonna set up what you do in 2019. So you better get your ducks in a row and, 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 and make it happen, okay? You owe it to yourself to know your numbers, because if you don't know your numbers, no one knows your numbers, and you don't know what you can spend, and oh, I forgot. See, I, I, when I talk, I just think of new things I can talk about. But let's say you have salespeople. Maybe you can incentivize your salespeople to go out and get new leads by giving them a bigger percentage of the upfront money because you know what the long-term value is on the back end. You're going to make it on the back end. If, I mean, if you're here to stay in business and it's not, you know, you're not here today, gone tomorrow, it's better to give your, incentivize your salespeople instead of trying to pay them just enough to keep them from quitting. Pay them more, but then also give them the responsibility they have to maintain whatever their normal business is or put some qualifiers on that or, or tier it. I remember you know, 40 years ago, I had started in, 
in the sales industry on the phone in the investments, you know, we were incentivized by how many sales we got. If we got five, we got a bump on all five of them. If we got 10, we got a bump on all 10 of them. So it incentivizes them to make more money. And to close this off here, let me give you a little example of why long-term customer value is so important. Um, it's, I don't know, maybe it's been 20 years ago. Um, I live down here in the desert and Gunthy Rankers right here, the famous infomercial company. And one of their best selling infomercials is a product called Proactive Skin Care. And, and it, it's like, I don't know, 30 bucks a month. Okay. And you can get the first month free and then they bill you for it at the end of the 30 days, blah, blah, blah. Well, at this time, the last time I had checked or done anything was four or five years ago, but the numbers were, it cost them about 230 $220, $230 to acquire that customer with their free offer. So imagine going negative for seven months until it paid off. But they knew the lifetime value of that client customer was another, I think it was 13 to 17 months that they would make a profit out, out of that. So 17 times 30 is 510 bucks, including the original 210. So that one customer was worth $750, but it cost them $250 to acquire the client. Now I'm not saying that you had to, you have to go negative because a lot of business owners can't afford to go negative, but if you can at least break even and you know you can make X amount past that point, you're, you're money ahead. So again, know your numbers. I apologize for rambling. I hope you got some value out of this. If you did, give me a like, give me a love. If you got a question about this whole process, leave it below. You got a comment you want to make, go ahead and make it. And if you know someone who this video would help that owns a business, please share it with them, share it on your page. Uh, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. I'd appreciate it as well. But in the meantime, there's nothing to buy or do anything with. I'm just, I'm creating these videos to help my son who's now 19 and he's now in the marketing space the last few years. And I thought these might also help business owners out there in today's marketplace since the economy is booming and you need to put these things in place to really take advantage of it. So. Thanks for watching. Have a great day or evening whenever you're watching it and God bless.